or IMP or both, um, you know, if you are saying that their LDL cholesterol should be less than 130, you are probably implying that you know you should try diet and then statins. And we feel that once you have been these people low risk, you know, should you go that route? Um, and we don't want to give uh, give a guideline about therapy, but we at least don't want to call them moderate risk because that automatically implies feeding. Right. Okay. So so we have really done away with the advantage. Very low and low risk. Uh, out of the things that we have here, diabetes, Matt, Dan, you said something about the diabetes. We, previously we said diabetes, just like everybody else said diabetes was uh, CHD equivalent, but do we need to put diabetes in a special population like the one that Robert said, firefighters and so on, or let diabetes go up? I, I, I think the diabetes should be in there. Right? Should be just like anybody else. Yeah. Right? Diabetes comes here, and diabetes comes with zero pernic calcium, goes like this, and no difference? Well, Matt, you might want to weigh in on this one. We're, we're talking about if we, could we add diabetes in here? Diabetes. And then, 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 then you could have this, pot, this second column, which is right. diabetes zero, but that's a risk factor, then you want to treat them down to 130. Right, so that's then, a moderate risk. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see the benefit of adding diabetes. What do you mean benefit of that? I, mean, I don't see benefit of any diabetics. Diabetics, diabetics are high risk. I know, but they would not get treatment corresponding to the severity of their disease if they're not screened. They've already been treated. So it's a whole different it's a whole different ball game. It's intensification of therapy versus not. It's not it's now we're about de intensifying the therapy. No, right? Because towards zero. Uh -huh. What do you do? Do you ignore shape? Well, that's your problem, so tell me what do you do. So do you want to, you're going to advocate that a diabetic with score zero gets no therapy, because now you're opening yourself up to criticism. Right, Paolo believes that. He's the only person who's ever published a paper on it, and he still says he wouldn't do it. So who's going to do it? You have to de-escalate therapy if you get a score of zero in a diabetic. Yeah, because shapes have been so far focusing on identifying people who need treatment. We'll get back to the whole thing with Sanjay. Yeah, we yesterday, if you de-escalate therapy, you're going to run into a fire storm, and now you're going to talk about de-escalating therapy in a diabetic. I don't think you can go down that road well, safely. I think we should mention that here, that the focus has been identifying those who are in need of uh, right. more and diabetics current, you can therefore, high risk. Therefore, we didn't pay attention. But that doesn't mean that imaging based on atherosclerosis would not be able to de-escalate treatment. But that's a subject of additional study. Exactly. Right. We put them into guidelines like that. OK, that's the special good. population, Robert. Wait. Let me just comment on that real quick. The, when I saw this, the one thing I didn't like was the um, treatment recommendation LDL part of it. And I would recommend that that be eliminated entirely because what you want to do here is identify risk in the patients and let the physician make up their own mind about what to do. It's going to be very difficult to, 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 to the physicians are not like you. They're no, not. No, what? So ATP4 is going to come out. These guidelines are going to change. People will argue about, well, why is an HDL cluster in there? I think it would be much better and better accepted by the medical community if you let the treatment part of this out of now entirely. Just take that LDL cluster. Well, I mean, the LDL was something. If we go with non HDL, it might be better, or it would be better, but leaving out therapy, it would be, it is not what shape is about. Shape is not really a diagnostic initiative. Shape is about reducing risk. You can't reduce risk if you don't guide them on what to do with the risk. Well, you can position the patients into categories like you're doing, low, medium, high risk, consider doing something. What I'm saying is the approach to treatment is going to vary quite a bit over the next few years. And that can be a very controversial aspect. No, we, 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 would, we would recommend this based on, at that time we did it based on available evidence. Now we have to recommend it based on available evidence. And if we go before uh, you know, NCP, that, that we might be a little blind, or we may just publish it right after NCP. Okay, well, it's my opinion. The, the other thing that I found in my traps, especially with primary care physicians, they want, they, they want, they want more than this. They they're, want they're everything. Ready. Because the two things they don't understand are who are the, my appropriate patients for these tests, and then secondly, what the hell do I do with them? Well, they are blind, but Robert, they, they don't need know. every guideline, every branch of this to be defined. Yeah, I had a similar concern. 
it, we don't want to be discordant with ATP4. Right. I think the treatment recommendations here are going to be in some way related to those. So I think it'll be important as we get toward publishing this well, well, to make we, an adjustment. No, Dan, remember we came with this one first and then ATP3 issued a new guideline two years after Shea and, and said the same thing. So let's not be afraid of becoming you know, ahead of curve because we are ahead of curve. No, if we wanted to get ahead of the curve, we'd start implementing some of the things that Robert's talking about, which would be maybe even be, be more aggressive. Controversial, too. But just we have to balance it. Okay, well, we're going to circulate this, but the bottom line is <coughs> what, what would you put, if you were to put something here, what would you put uh, in this category? What would you put here besides the LDL? I, I would put a. Would a non HDL? No, no. I, but what I'm telling you is I wouldn't put anything in there except. And I said if you were to put goals, what would you put corresponding to each of these? Wouldn't you put. Well, again, you, 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 <laughs> you, you, would, you would need evidence based. You need an evidence based approach, and that's what HDB4 is looking at. Okay. But clearly, you add things like HDB4. By the way, HDB4 is, is going to get evidence from where? We have. All the evidence we are right in the core of it. You, you've heard my opinion. I yes, no, I'm mean, I mean, asking your opinion if you were, as an expert in lipid, to correspond goals for each of these. Would you? What would you put over here if you were to put? Well, well I would include a lot more sophisticated tests, but this is criticized for downstream increasing costs and all that kind of stuff. That's I just because I practice Robert's work, I'm talking about a Joe Blow practitioner. Can't afford all of it. Well, why, don't you, why don't you add an HDL uh, goal? Why don't so we have HDL? The, uh, the other suggestions from yesterday, remember, were lifestyle modifications and risk. Yeah, we have those. We have those. Right. What well, I'm so trying to get is so you come up with some. What we've done here is we've we've changed the way of classifying the risk. The goals then at those risk levels are going to fluctuate. Right now it's ATP3. Next year it's going to be ATP4. So I think we have to use whatever available numbers are provided for us by the current guidelines. But ATP4 comes with this kind of classification. Well, we don't know what it's going to be. But I think for the moment, we might be better off waiting until after ATP4, leave, go through step three, and then leave, put the numbers in after ATP4 comes out. That doesn't mean that we're not taking a step ahead of them, because okay. we're reclassifying okay. the risk. Exactly. But the okay. most aggressive category, the highest risk, what, what the way we would treat the highest risk will be that what we want to be that that one we want that to be concordant with ATP4. Right. I, I think that's a, I think that's a great point because that's part of the problem in, in the adoption of this is when there's mixed messages. Uh, you know, one one group is saying this, another group is saying that, but if it's in concordance, I think that. Would but, be but, but keep that in mind. ATP4 does not follow this kind of risk strategy. No, it doesn't matter. We are modifying the risk stratification, but the goals that they give us for each of their risk levels, we should use. Are we sure they're going to come up with very high risks? We don't know yet. But I think I do think it would be premature for us to put numbers down there when ATP4 is going to come out. But what we want to do is have terms that are simply understood by everybody. The problem, we, okay. Well, we're going to have to discuss this through email. The problem is that ATP4 does not have a tool, assuming that they don't put imaging in there. A tool to correspond severity intensity of treatment with the severity of disease. They're just putting it here as they would everybody be here, regardless if they have a ton of calcium or no calcium, a ton of plaque or no plaque. And that's where we are here. Yeah, but that doesn't matter that they don't do that work. We're doing that. We're saying we're reclassifying the patients on the basis of their subclinical atherosclerosis, and then on the basis of the risk that we assign to them, we use the ATP4 criteria for goals. So we're, we're still making our point very dramatically. We're not using their criteria for risk stratification, we're using our criteria. And then we're assigning the level of risk according to the numbers that they provide. But, but in their view, all of these are high risk. And there's no distinction in this person, this group needs to be get, get Well, we don't know that. So that's what exactly ATP3 was. Right. Yeah, but ATP4 so, may be different. So, 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 so I think, if I'm hearing what, what's being said is, Think it has created issues with questions I get on these is exactly that. That you have extra risk stratification here that's not provided by ATP. 
And we don't know what four is going to be. I agree with you. I doubt there's going to be five risk categories because their goal from day one when they start writing these recommendations is to try to keep it simple. And every year, you know, they try to get it simpler and simpler. Because physicians in general follow these anyway. And it makes it even more difficult and more complex. So, so in essence, when you make recommendations of treatment, LDL target goals or whatever you want to do, you, you're going to come at odds with ATP, four, possibly, likely. So, you know, one, one way around that is not make any recommendations of treatment <coughs> or try to make the categories match their categories of treatment. Okay, we'll uh, have to put this in discussions later that uh, we don't have a specific guideline here for targets, but the targets cannot be so demanding that people have to go do a lot of stuff, and then we're just changing this whole paradigm to a ton of other things that Ari does, or Robert does, but not a primary practitioner office can do. Now, we're, we're gonna have to, for me, if, if we're going, coming over here, we want to add, uh, LP little A, or we're going to have one of those genetic markers, then we have to be strong about that. But practicality, cost effectiveness, adoption, availability, and so on are considered in issuing the, you know, guideline versus a, an individual practice. Okay, I think we've, we've taken the notes here. Dan, last time we, when we were finishing this, we did not have a very a strong uh, CTA position at that time. And we said here it goes, it goes to myocardial ischemia and then goes to angiography. Is there any need to revise the very highest group? Will people with coronary calcium 400, 500, 700? What it, what's, I mean, almost it's obvious to me now that you're doing CTA, you don't do ischemia tests. But what, what, do you, what would you recommend? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it has to change. I think you could leave it alone. Just the, like that? Yeah, for the asymptomatic patient. Yeah, asymptomatic, very high risk. No, chronic calcium 700. Because if, if, if you try to say CTA, people will criticize the calcium score being so high, you don't get a diagnosis. A, okay. You don't really get, you, you already know how to manage the patient medically. You're trying to decide where to go to the cath lab. Right. And I think it's, it should be ischemia driven rather ischemia. than anatomy driven. Ischemia, yeah. ischemia is your mind two things yeah. same way? Okay. I don't truly agree with that. I said it clear yesterday, but... Yeah, but we're going to make you... Put it from a guideline. What's that? No, I think, well, even currently, what is the SCCT recommendation for the upper limit for calcium score to do a CTA? I think it's big. Symptom type. Symptom. What is it? It's a thousand. No, it's not about like what calcium score... It's a thousand, is it? I publish a thousand. Other people say 800. I mean, there's different numbers that have been thrown out there. Yeah, but ischemia is easier to adopt because everybody knows ischemia. So that's... Not as accurate though. There's a Medicare guideline that says 1,700. Not as accurate, much more radiation. I've never even heard that number before, but that's in one of the Medicare guidelines for the LCDs. Is 1,700 as a cover. As soon as we get a trial showing CT as the gatekeeper of the cath lab, then we could right. Then we can put CT there. Test, we, don't, right. we don't really have it yet. And we are on track to get that trial. It's just a wish. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, the, well, the promise trial and the ischemia trial. Yeah. They both be that. The ischemia trial will probably be a gatekeeper of the cath lab better actually than promise. So we'll probably have that trial. It looks like it will be funded. Okay. So I think with that we come to the conclusion of uh, all the considerations of uh, shape two updates. Uh, the retest. Oh, and, and one yeah, part of the plan what we've done from low plan to less than. I think you mentioned that we have agreed that the uh, stenosis is too much. Right. And so the point was that uh, in this category, the first category, okay, over here, uh, we agreed that this to be a stenotic, right, very uh, high risk category. And but here, we wanted to be, uh, I think we were talking about like 20% to 50%. Here, the same left. The problem is that you cannot call it black. So why don't we just say, well, when you have a stenotic plaque, but basically just this category, uh, you go through a very high risk, 
these two, we really don't care about the, the but we have to say something about the, the level of plaque. This is, this one has plaque, and this one has either more than one plaque, two plaques, bilateral, or, or, or uh, maybe 20%, 30%. Something more than 10%. So often here you can just say less than 10% in this category, 10 to 50. I don't think you can do doublets to decide. Can you say multiple plaques or? Um, but yeah. you're right. I mean, Kathleen's absolutely right. You can't visually look at these. No, you can't. I know, but you can't even do with duplex. You can't distinguish well, between 10 to 15%. Uh, and nor do you want the doctors doing No, we don't even really want that. Exactly. So, so it's what, a what, level. we don't want that. So, so Kathleen, what do you. What, can you say extensive plaque? No, you can't. Ka it's Kathleen, extensive plaque. It's, it's not fun. What to you is risk? Is it, is it a plaque or is it, a, or is it a beyond a certain <laughs> thickness of IMT? Um, what is it to you? It's, it's to me, it's the, it's the volume of the plaque or the area of the plaque, but we can't write that because that's not something that's a standardized thing. Um, and to me, the other thing is if you have multiple plaques, if you're plaque in CCA, I, you know, maybe we should write multiple plaques. Or maybe but nothing well, is. How about, you know, how about just, how about just, how about, how about plaque that's, that's, you know, a certain thickness that is major d dimension, like 1.5, you know, you choose the number. So in other words, how about greater than 3.5 millimeters? 3.5 is the number that um, Eric chose for uh, enrolling patients. See, so I think that's perfect. I think it's something like that. Five for which if you can find a number, then it's perfect. Yeah, size. So yeah, you make, make that many. Okay. okay. In any second. Right. In any second. Right. I mean, it's not perfect, but I, I, there's right. nothing that you can come up with exactly. that has been validated. And one of the things we need to should discuss is that the importance of having these two separated. Do we really need to have, I don't know whether it's before it's going to come out, but moderate the high risk and high risk. We could have just say, come down here, this is high risk and this is very high risk, and combine the two because they don't really change our practice. And then maybe before comes with, with But then you don't have a moderate risk in here at all because you're converting lower risk. Yeah, so we're just going to be. Low no, risk. you'd have moderate. You'd have low, moderate, and high. No, but we are changing that moderate to right. something to else. low and very low. Right. So we're going to have very low with no risk factors and zero things. So it would be very low, and then low, and then high risk, and then very high risk. We shouldn't probably have the moderate. Would we, would we call someone with a calcium score of one very high, high risk? Uh, I don't know, if there are one, between one to 10 was the, the gray area, right. but they come in into high risk. Yeah. And that was a percentile was a major issue, but uh, you have current calcium at 10, you're high risk. You're current empty more than 0.8, you're high risk. You're high risk, now you're seeing moderately high risk, high risk, and very high risk. So with IMG, I think we can separate based on percentile, but plaque area, we're not quite sure. So that's something. One more thing, since we increased our age, we went to 80 or we kept it at 75? No, we went to 80. But if you go to 80, then you have, I, I think you should stay at 75 because 0. 0.8 and for an 80 year old is actually 50 centile. Oh. So if you stay at 75, you at least do away That's with probably that. probably was one of the reasons we kept it at 75, by say one. How what do the ACE guidelines recommend? Don't oh. they recommend something? Who? Oh. ACE. They have guidelines for IMT, right? What do they recommend for you? For who? For which no, 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 no recommendations for screening, Matt. No, 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 no recommendations. They have recommendations on on doing IMT, right? No, they don't. So, so of course they do. Published well, by Jim Stein in 2008. And the ACE. Oh, the, you mean the, the, the American, American Society of Echocardiography. Right. The Formal right. Society has made recommendations. What do they say? For I think it's 75th percentile. Is that what it says? Yeah, everybody uses everybody uses 75th percentile. Okay. Why? American, exactly. But what, what data set do they recommend? The data set you refer to your own, the data set yeah. that you're referring to should have the same methodology that you're implementing in your lab. But they have, the, the, the methodology they have recommended is like a semi array methodology. So they're probably referring you to refer to their uh, data so They wrote a guideline that doesn't, that says you 75%, but they won't tell you which data set to refer to. Exactly. <coughs> that, that's, well, we, that's, that's the problem. All right, that's the problem. Yeah, whichever it is that you're doing. Okay, I think we, we, we're, we're going to leave this also, Jeff. This is one of the right. open topics. Okay. Having the two categories separated. What about CRP? We skipped over them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there. Okay. Yeah, it is. That's it. Yeah. 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 We, we have CRP here. We got the 
going to have to also categorize the ABR. We have plenty more. All right, so no, so small, if you're going to use CRP, it's two, right? That's Jupiter. Yeah, we've got to use that. Yeah, if you're going to use CRP, then the threshold is two. Yeah, it's not two. Four is not a threshold, right? right. It's not a threshold. Right. So, and ABI yeah. is less than 0.9. That's no, interesting. We already, we already have that. That's an interesting way of doing it. It's putting it down there instead, leaving it where it is now. Well, well then people to the left if they have an ABI at that point. So, I like so Mark, that. Mark, I would suggest anything beyond uh, uh, standard lipid profile for screening. I would wait for 18 I mean, I think there's a light pie like that CRP will be included, but if it's not, I don't think it should go in there. I think again, it right. creates controversy, less acceptance. Okay, the original consensus. So that, that's what I would suggest. I mean, I think Harvey's suggestion let's wait to see ADP4 is a good one. When is ADP4 coming out? It's going to be posted in the spring, I think, for comment. It, it keeps getting delayed. Nobody really knows. Okay. So, so that means we even keep the same arm. We're going to have to definitely to take these discussions to online, and we're going to have to close this discussion yes. now because we've uh, exceeded our budget in time. <laughs> and uh, thanks so much for staying so uh, insistent, persistent in this. But this is going to be evolved, and it looks like we're going to have to meet our AHA meeting to be like this. So uh, we're going to communicate with you through Jeff. Our AHA, we have already a uh, reserved room at the Hyatt over there in, in um, yeah. Chicago. Yeah. So we look forward to seeing you uh, in November. I would like to make one, one last try, and instead of just myocardial ischemia test, but myocardial ischemia test or CT. We'll see. Yeah.